Good morning, everyone. It's Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farms. Today I'm gonna do a flower border tour for you. I got a new GoPro in the mail, so I'm hoping this footage will be nice and smooth for everyone. And we can just walk around the garden together and see what's growing and blooming. So here at the entrance of the garden, we have the hedge of our garden sage. And this sage is really easy to propagate from softwood cuttings. Just take a cutting, stick it in rooting hormones, stick it in moist potting soil. Keep that soil evenly moist and a nice humid environment and pretty soon you'll have a whole lot of free sage. Now this year for the first time ever I went ahead and put in the velveteen coleus and I am so glad I did because the contrast between this velveteen coleus and their Bergarten sage, I just think is stunning. And this is only the second year for the sage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now back behind that, we seeded some Tithonia together and it's putting on some nice growth now. I'd say it's about three and a half feet now. This is Arctic Fire Yellow Dogwood. Um, back there, some Verbena banariensis. Of course, I'm probably saying that wrong. You can feel free to correct me if you like. That's the way I say it. Now over here, we have our Firelight Hydrangea, which is just starting to turn color. I can try to step into the garden here and get a closer look for you. You can see that some of my foxglove are still putting on some stems for me, but not not much. All the main stems have been harvested at this point. But you can kind of see the firelight starting to change color. And this firelight's two years old, but I moved it at the very beginning of the season. So it's functioning more like it's newly planted right now. All right, let me step, step back out of this garden without trying to fall. Now I see Rocky's going to join us today on the tour as usual. So now here's our hedge of catmint, and I've recently sheared this back so that we can get a second flush on it. A beautiful lime-colored spirea there, backed up by the obedient plant, which blooms still another month until we see any blooms from that. And I can show you a shot down here at the right side of the border. both borders, I guess. Well, anyway, here's a limelight hydrangea, which I'm sure we all know and love. Not quite ready to be harvested yet. I don't like to harvest the limelight until it's fully open, and I prefer to wait until it starts to turn just slightly lime green to pick it for a customer. Otherwise, often, this top is going to turn to mush for them. And if you've never trialed it, if you just start selling it and pick it like this, it, it goes mush in a couple days, so wait till it's fully open. The meteor shower of Verbena is looking great, and I am noticing a lot of butterflies visiting it. Down there is our native cone flower. And then down here below is the moonbeam coreopteris. And there's just no easier perennial to grow than Coreopteris, is there? I love it. Now here we'll stop by our first thing that, uh, well we saw the Tithonia from seed, but. So these asters are from seed and these are powder puff asters. I got these seed from Roarers, which is where I get most of my seed. No matter what brand, I usually like to purchase from Roarers. And we'll see a lot of powder puff asters on our journey today because they're all starting to open. Aster is a long day plant and so they're coming into their prime now. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of bees today on our journey. And we probably would see some butterflies but it's kind of overcast so I'm not sure if they'll be joining us today. But I did see a hummingbird when I first turned the camera on. It was so wonderful but I didn't capture it but um, maybe she is flying around. Anyway. Down here we have some Lontana. This is five plants of Lontana down here. 
and I'm glad I put that in. You know, I can't use it for a cut, but sometimes it is nice to have things that are just in the garden to look at in the garden. And back there, I have the lambs here from my grandma's garden. All the lambs here from my property is right from her yard. Uh, Prairie Sun Rebecca seeded itself here from last year. I just harvested 30 gladiolas for someone two days ago, so we're, um, you're probably not going to see too many gladiolas today just because we're in between flushes. <laughs> Ooh, I just had to blow off a mosquito. Um, so you see a lot of sunflowers on the property. These yellow ones are not for cuts, they're just for fun. But all the other color ones are different pollenless varieties, and I will try to address that. Here the Vitex is blooming, almost coming out of its bloom, really. And if you are in a higher growing zone than I am, I'm in zone 6B, the Vitex is going to be more like a tree. For me, it's more like a shrub. Sometimes it dies all the way back to the ground, um, sometimes not. It really depends on the kind of winter that we have. So yeah, you can see a few gladiolas, I suppose, that should be harvested and go to the stand, but we're expecting a big storm to come through, so I'm not set up today. I guess some yarrows over there. And I harvested what I want of the yarrow for drying for the Christmas tree this year. Okay, so more sunflowers. You might have seen some on some of my other tours, something I feel I need to address, which was in this spot was um, tiger daylilies. And the tiger daylilies were on our property when we first moved in. They weren't here, they were somewhere else, but I moved them. Um, I'm only seeing the leaf. But the tiger daylily is in base up here in Pennsylvania. So as soon as I saw them bloom this year, I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> and I ripped them out, of course. So I replaced it with a new hydrangea that's gonna be available in 2021. And it's called Quickfire Tidbit. And it's a really small, cute version of the quick fire. So for more pictures of that, I would Google it because it's gonna be stunning. Now here I have my River of Autumn Joy Sedum, which is such a wonderful plant to have if you like to grow flowers for cutting because the structure is awesome. It takes up a lot of room if you ever feel like well, this just needs a little more foliage, or this just needs a little more filler. The Autumn Joy Sedum at this stage, this is when I like it the best. I like it before it goes pink. I think once it goes pink and gets that big head, it's too big. But this is wonderful, just this filler and sparkle. And so I've added in some other kinds of sedum onto the property too um, that we can see. Oh, the mosquitoes are killing me, you guys. Okay, so there's our snowball viburnum back there. Now you see that darker colored sunflower? Let me step back in here. Uh, that's Chianti. That's my new favorite sunflower for this year. Now look at this one. I don't think I'll grow this one again. This is called Moonbeam. Every single one of the moonbeams that I planted are incredibly small. Um, very strange. I planted them in multiple different locations, so I think it's the seed, I don't think it's me. If I would have just planted them in one place, I would question myself, but seeing it do that all over the place, I'm not happy with that seed. And back there is evening sun, which does get pollen, and so I just use that for the garden, but it's beautiful. Look how tall some of these guys are. I said to myself, oh, I'm not gonna let the sunflowers take over on the border this year, but. But then I see them and I say, okay, they can take over. <laughs> so a lot more asters over here and coming up on some zinnias. I really try to space out my zinnia planting so that they don't all come in at once. Because that was the first lesson I learned uh, four or five years ago. I planted way too many zinnias all at once. So I really space those plantings out now. I don't need 500 zinnias every day but that's just me and, and what I'm doing here. More powder puff aster. Really fun, really great cut. 
this canary bird zinnia. Bees on everything. Can you see that bee in there? Oh, there's another bee. Uh, this is Luminessa zinnia. David's Fox is really loving life this year and getting nice and tall for me. Almost as tall as me, four and a half feet at least. Let's see, a little bit of powdery mildew down there. And I am in a humid climate, so those things happen. This is bee balm that floated over here from uh, my neighbor's wildflower meadow. Uh, I don't love that it's here in the front of the border, but it's okay for this year. I'll probably stick it somewhere else next year. And another limelight. Back there, uh, hollyhocks that are putting out their seed now. I just let the seed fall and then cut the stalks off. I think these gladioles have all been harvested. Uh, Cleome just pops up on its own everywhere around here and I like that. Um, it reminds me a lot of my grandma. Some people were asking me about Lysianthus, if I grow it, and yes I do. So here's some right here. And the key to growing Lysianthus is an amazing amount of patience. It takes forever. And I think once you just know that it's going to take forever, you can just be okay with that and wait. Uh-oh, look at this glad that fell over. What color is this? Oh, how interesting. Now this is in the section with my Priscilla's and this certainly looks different, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna cut that and bring it in for myself. I'll just stick it there for now. Um, back here, and now I'm really running out of space to walk, but there's some phlox, and some Rebecca. What else do we have back here buried? Well, lots of things. Another Chianti sunflower. Now, isn't this amazing? I just love it. And it's pollenless. So here's what I'm doing with um, the Chiantis now, the ones over here on this side. I'm letting them go to seed because I paid a lot of money for the seed for how many seeds I got. So these are for seed production now. They're glorious. I would never recommend something that I didn't really uh, believe in seed wise and the Chianti, if you can get your hands on that seed, I would. I think it'll bring you a lot of joy. Annabelle Hydrangea, I picked what I want from that for the dried flower Christmas tree. And uh, here's a Mexican bush sage looking real good. Some dahlias. Sorry guys, a lot of things have been harvested, so that's the thing about my garden is that it's a working garden. And so in some ways as a ornamental garden, it's never going to look quite as impressive, I guess, because I'm constantly cutting from it. But that's what I like to do and that's what brings me joy. Okay, so here's Pinky Winky Hydrangea and I'm gonna move this guy somewhere else in the fall because Pinky Winky gets really big and doesn't have enough space to do that here. But I like it. It's a really nice big bloom. You can see that compared to my hand. Um, now see this damage? I should have prefaced this to this tour with that. We've had two huge hailstorms whip through. So most of the damage that you're gonna see is from hail. Getting a second flush of baby's breath there. Not usable as a cut, but usable for the Christmas tree. Some mallow here, and some ladies' mantle. And there's the big hosta, which um, it got so damaged from the hail. You know, the hail, as far as anything with a big leaf, is just terrible that I cut it back substantially. I'm going to sneak down here and risk getting completely bitten up to show you this snowflake oak leaf hydrangea. Now, some leaves have fallen onto it. But look at this. Wow, amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's got it's got leaves and dirt on it and everything, but look at that. <laughs> it only got two blooms on itself this year, but uh, I think that oak leaves seem to just take a really long time to get established, but I think it's still worth, worthwhile to plant them. All right, let's get out of Mosquito Central.
I'm gonna stop walking um, down the border for now and go over here so that the tour doesn't end up being crazy long. So here is the, what I call the hydrangea garden. This is vanilla strawberry hydrangea. Just starting to take on a little bit of color, not too much color. Really a easy care hydrangea. All of the paniculata hydrangeas are just super easy to care for and they can take full sun. There's a crepe myrtle there. I put some lantana back here as an experiment. Now this area gets really hot sun only late in the day, probably from four till sundown. And I wanted to see what lantana would do with that amount of sun. It's doing okay, but definitely not as good as my other plantings of lantana. Down here is clustered bellflower putting on probably its fourth flush, which is a nice cut flower and it's a perennial. And then the angelonia, I'm really liking the angelonia. Guys, I almost never buy annual plants. In fact, this year I probably bought more annual plants than ever before. I just prefer to grow things from seed. But when I just found that dollar sale at, um, what nursery was it? Tudbanks the nursery, I was like, oh, I mean, I spent $30, I got 30 annual plants. You know, I just couldn't help myself, right? You understand. Okay, so we have mini Mavet hydrangea, and she's only been in the ground about a month. A really reliable hydrangea any smooth hydrangea too i feel like the smooth hydrangea gets overlooked and i don't know why because it's wonderful and it's so easy haas halo's taken on its fall color well oh, gladiola needs to be picked and invincible spirit now you can see it's taken on its fall color we can pick it now for drying if we want feels nice and papery it's ready to go I've actually, um, I've cut this at this stage, stuck it into a grapevine wreath right from the plant and let it dry like that. And it was really great. And then you don't have to deal with that, the shedding that sometimes happens when you're working with dried plants. I've also seeded in, oh, sorry, just had to kill a mosquito. I've also seeded in a whole bunch of teddy bear sunflowers, about 500. So in September, We'll have that to see. Oh, here's Nicotiana. I love Nicotiana. Every time I put this in a bouquet, I feel like I hear the same thing. What is that? And whenever I'm hearing that from customers on a continuous basis, it tells me plant more of that, include more of that. Anything that gives people that wonder and that excitement. You know, you're not going to see this in a grocery store bouquet. You're just not and uh, very easy to grow from seed. More zinnia here, and I can show you some damage from a bug called tarnish plant bug. Do you see how this bloom is completely deformed? This is caused by tarnish plant bug, and you can Google that to see what he looks like. He's a small flying bug, he's brown, very hard to control organically because he can fly. <laughs> um, and, that, and the way I've chosen to deal with him is to not plant any zinnias in the same place year after year and to just really succession plant in different locations all over the place. Really terrible hail damage on my peonies. Very sad. Let's move on to something happy is a hibiscus that comes straight to us from my grandma's garden. It went from my grandma's garden to my mom and now lives here in my garden. And that's the best way to garden in my opinion. Oh, some more hydrangeas, you know. You can never have enough hydrangeas. Another limelight. I put this limelight over here last fall, so it's not old at all. And some more lantana down here. This lantana looks like Bananarama from Proven Winners. 
Once again, I only had to pay a dollar for that. Can you believe that? Okay, over here from Seed, we have Quis Purple Gomfrina. How you spell that is Q-I-S. It stands for Quality in Seed. This Gomfrina, I feel, is the most reliable Gomfrina. And it's just wonderful. I think it has a wonderful vintage feel. It reminds me of my grandma. She used to always uh, grow Gomfrina. You know, back then where it was just the standard white, pink, and this purple. That's all we had back then, from what I remember at least. But I love it. And uh, I want to give it a hug. It makes me miss her a lot. Okay, here is a Winecraft Gold smoke bush, And isn't this wonderful, guys? This is my new favorite shrub. Nope, I don't think you can beat how beautiful this truly is. Um, if you can get your hands on one of these. And you know what? This smoke bush doesn't get that tall. Um, I have to check my notes, but I think it's just four to six feet tall and wide. It might only be four by four feet, so go ahead and Google that. But it's not like those ginormous smoke bushes that we all grew up around. So the straw flowers. I love them. They're so fun, right? Do you grow straw flowers? Let me know. Uh, also known as helichrysum, depending on what area of the country you're joining me from. That's probably more helpful. I use more botanical names, but anyway, I love them. You know, the foliage of straw flower is quite weedy, but the blooms, I think, make it worth it. And so maybe you can kind of hide their stalks so that you don't have to see kind of the weedy foliage. Can you let me pull back so you can see what I'm talking about? I'm hoping you can see that in the camera, but it, it does look weedy. And so maybe if I strategically planted something, you know, that came to here, that would be really beautiful in the landscape. But honestly, I don't think it bothers me because it's giving me just so many flowers to cut. Oh, the sun is coming out. Anyway, this is really the straw flower area. And down here we have Prairie Sun Rebecca. Let me get a fresh one for you. I haven't even been cutting this one, but Prairie Sun has a nice green center. All right, guys, let's go over to the driveway garden. I won't take up too much more of your time. Let me know if the footage is any better for you all with the GoPro. Another limelight. All right, so now my neighbor is mowing the lawn, so hopefully that's not too distracting. So this is the area that I just dug up two weeks ago, I guess, to plant this up. Just to kind of demonstrate how I lay out a new cutting garden. So here we have um, a hedge of lavender. Once again, really easily propagated from softwood cuttings. This is Limelight Prime. I put some purple sedum in because, you know, I really just do love the sedum. So easy care. Back here we have Denver Daisy Rubecchia. Uh, maybe what you didn't see in that video where I was kind of talking about how to plant cut flowers in the landscape was that I also seeded in some things. So I seeded in some more tithonia there for height and privacy. And it's actually going all the way around here. Lowscape Mound Aronia. I'll show you the berries. The berries are really nice. See that? Isn't that nice? Uh, Dianthus. Oh, dear Lord. I need to come out here and clean up this Dianthus. Whoops. <laughs> so I tried an experiment with the Lombata, which was to cut it back heavily after its first flush and see what would happen. So you can see that it did send out a whole new set of blooms, but they're too short for cutting, unfortunately. But um, they did bloom again. So if you're just planting Lombata for the landscape, it probably is worthwhile to go ahead and cut it back. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm done cutting it. I'm letting it go to seed and set its seed for me so that I don't have to plant it again. It's going to plant itself. 
let's see this is a pearl glam beautyberry here now this garden guys the driveway garden always looks a little bit wild that doesn't really bother me personally i know it's not everyone's style but it's a cutting garden and it's just a mishmash of wonderful things to cut <laughs> now if the sun was shining um the bird bath would be going because it's solar powered this is ridiculous coleus and you can see some hail damage but i do love that red color how about you sun is coming in and out so i'm sorry about that some really tall and thick tithonia here's the prairie sun that i cut from mainly is the one over here beautiful right okay we're getting into the dahlias now which are just now starting to bloom here's stars fit oh thrips okay now can we see this on the camera I don't know if the GoPro can focus on that but do you see this little guy is thrips definitely need to get in here and kill him okay I won't bore you with that I really am enjoying this one. This is called Peter's Glory. I think I'll come out here um, once the dahlias really start producing and do more of a full dahlia tour and maybe talk about pests of dahlias and different ways to deal with them organically. Uh, there sure is a lot to talk about when it comes to dahlias and bugs and being organic. Sorry if it's getting loud. More dahlias. And guys, since it is getting pretty loud, I'll just show you one more thing and call it quits. Um, but I wanna show you this pink flamingo, pink flamingo celosia. So look at the plant from the bottom to the top. It's incredibly impressive, incredibly easy to grow. And I want to show you that, and let's walk away from the traffic and talk about this um, pink flamingo celosia. I have had a lot of trouble in the past with other celosias with different kinds of beetles. But for whatever reason, right Rocky? For whatever reason, the pink flamingo celosia is not giving me a stitch of problems with bugs. So if you have problems maybe with celosia or amaranth getting eaten to bits by beetles, try out pink flamingo celosia because as I say, it's really been easy breezy for me. Well guys, I think I better call it quits. It's getting pretty loud and bright. But I wanna thank you so much for joining me out here in the garden today. And until next time, happy gardening. Bye.